we begin, I want to ask if the lights weren't so bright, if I can still see you guys, by a race of hands, who here likes to travel? Race of hands, yes, everybody. Who here has ever dreamt about going to Europe and seeing the Eiffel Tower or going to, I see some hands raised, going to Venice, riding a gondola? Or what about um, seeing some of the wonders of the world? Has anybody ever dreamed of doing that? Yes? All right, okay. So a lot of people were asking me if my talk today would be about travel. And in some respects, yes, it will be about travel. But more than that, like what they said, it's more about the insights that I've gained from all my travels around the world. So I hope that at the end of this talk, um, it will inspire you to maybe go out there and do your own travel. And more than that, to have these own experiences for yourself. But before we get to that, allow me to introduce myself. So my name is Julia. My name is Julia Alexandra Chu. I am from UP Diliman from batch 2013. Um, I studied public administration, so I used to work in government, I used to work in Malacanang. Um, I graduated valedictorian of my batch. Wow, I'm so smart. <laughs> um, I was also magna cum laude, so all of this will come in later in the story why I'm telling you this. And lastly, right now, I'm working as a management consultant for Accenture. Okay, so um, since I'm talking a lot about travel, I want to tell you about some of the places I've been to, some of the places that maybe some of you are imagining to go to or dreaming about going to. So I want to like tickle your fancy a little bit and get you excited. So I've been to Russia. I was in Russia in 2012. Um, I was, I've also been to Japan, 2012 as well. Um, to Romania, I did an internship in Romania. I worked to the Royal Bank of Scotland for about seven weeks. And also to Sri Lanka. So I've been to more or less every continent in the world. Um, and I've had a lot of interesting stories. So this is just a little bit about my background. But what I want to get into right now are the five things that I've learned through all the 27 countries that I've been to. So the first thing I learned, um, have any of you guys ever heard of Robert Frost? Yes, of course, a very famous poet. So he said in one of his poems, I took the road less traveled by and that has made all the difference. And for me, this is something that has resonated with me very strongly. Why? So I told you earlier, right, you know, I was valedictorian, magna cum laude, a very great conscious person. This is UP Manila, so I expect maybe some of you um, would cry if you get a dos or a tres. Is this true? Yes? Okay, you don't want to say it, but all right. So I was supposed to go to law school in 2013, and I got accepted into UP Law and into Ateneo Law. So that's my name right there. Click. But on the same day that I was supposed to pay for my law school, there was a 5,000 peso reservation fee. It was on March 20, 2013, I remember very clearly, because on that day, I also got an offer to go to Peru on an internship. Now, to give you guys some background, I have been dreaming about going to law school since I was 13 years old. Everything I have done in my entire life was leading up to that moment of going to law school, becoming a lawyer, and eventually becoming the Chief Justice of the Philippines. So that's my dream. Why are you laughing? It's gonna happen someday. I wanted to be the first woman Chief Justice, but that girl took my spot, so I hate her a little bit. So what happened? At the end of the day, I called my dad, who is over there in the second row, and I was crying to him, I was asking him, do I go to Peru or do I go to law school? Because um, if you get into law school, your application is only for that year. If you wanna go the next year, you have to take the law exam again, and I'm taking the LAE tomorrow, which means I actually didn't go to law school. So at the end of the day, I actually chose to go to Peru, and this is my road less traveled. Now, a lot of people ask me, why are you giving up law school? You're so stupid. Only two people in my college got into UP Law, and they're asking me, why are you not taking your future seriously? Why are you deviating from this path? You're so successful already. You're going to UP Law. You graduated magna cum laude. And I realized that, is anybody here a, is, is anybody here a psych major? Anyone? One, hi, okay. All right, um, when I was taking a psychology class, I encountered the term life script. A cultural script about how you should live your life. And this may sound very familiar to you. A Filipino life script goes something like this. You go to school, get good grades, graduate, get a good job, get a good salary, start a family, and then maybe travel when you're older. And I thought that was the only way to live life. And that's what everybody else expected of me. But then when I started traveling around the world, I saw that everybody was living their life in different ways. And I realized that I had the power to do the same. I didn't have to be like everybody else and follow this so-called measure of success that the world was thrusting upon me. So I decided to go to Peru 
and that was my road less traveled. And I have never looked back since. It was an amazing experience. And honestly, I didn't want to come back home. Um, I wanted to just stay and live in Latin America. I went across seven countries in Latin America. But I did come back for some reasons, which I will get into later. So this is my team. I worked with a team of Colombians and Peruvians, and we went all over the world. We went to Egypt, we went to Mexico. I was in the middle of three revolutions. Um, I was in Brazil when the revolution erupted. I was in Sri Lanka after they ended a seven-year civil war. And I was also in, what was the third country? I don't remember anymore. Um, Egypt, oh, thank you, I was in Egypt when um, the revolution erupted in Tahrid Square. Now the second truth I discovered is that at the end of the day, we should be collecting moments and not things. And this is where I'm gonna share something very personal with you guys. So, oddly enough, throughout my high school and college life, I've had a lot of friends who've died. I've had six friends who've died young, three of them from drunk driving, another who drowned in Sagada Falls, and one who actually just died last week. So, for me, I really came to realize the importance, the importance of collecting moments and not things, of valuing spending time with your family or spending time with your friends over an exam that you have to pour over tonight or a paper that you need to write. So time and time again, I'm sure all of us have made excuses like, I can't see you tonight or I can't see my friends tonight because I have an exam tomorrow or I have an exam next week and I need to study for one week because I'm so diligent. So we've made all of these excuses, but you know, I put off a lot of my friends for so long and you know, the next time I saw them was at that funeral. And that was so painful because I had realized that what was I gonna show for at the end of the day? What uno I had in my exam, what good paper I wrote, or was it the relationships that I had, the relationships I built with people? So I decided to do just that. I wanted to start collecting moments and not collecting things, awards, achievements anymore because those didn't really matter. When you're on your deathbed, you're not gonna say, mom, can you give me my diploma from UP? Or ask for that award that you got from some business competition in some random country. No, at the end of the day, you'll want the people you love around you. And that's what I really realized. The third truth I discovered, and this one is a lot of fun, is that life begins at the end of your comfort zone, at the edge of your comfort zone. Now, again, some very personal things. I grew up in a very well-to-do family. I didn't want for anything. I was driven to school every day, picked up from school every day. Even now at work, I still get driven and picked up <laughs> from work like I'm in, still in school and I get my baon and I eat my lunch like that. But for one year when I went to Peru, I was working for an NGO. And you know, when you say you work for an NGO, you get a very minimal salary, more like an allowance of sorts. And I remember this moment of being in my early 20s and being broke with a bunch of other young people. And there was this one particular moment, my boyfriend had just broken up with me and I was crying. Of course, you know, I was like, oh, he broke my heart. <laughs> and my best friend goes, Julia, don't cry, we don't have toilet paper. <laughs> and you know, the thing is that when people look at hardship, they're so afraid of it and they say, I don't wanna experience this because you know, it's something I'm gonna look back on with regret and pain and fear. But actually, all these moments that I had, all these hard moments I had in the past, were actually the moments that brought me even closer to the people around me. And why is that? I discovered it's because when you're vulnerable to people, when you share difficult experiences, and not just the surface level, fluffy, happy experiences, those are the times you can really build real connections with people. And at the end of the day, those are the things that are really important in life. So this is my team. We were 15 people. We were living together in a house that was getting cleaned maybe once a year, and we were only together for a year. Um, but it was a wonderful experience, and it was something, something that I do not regret. A lot of the time, people ask me, but you know, you were getting ahead, uh, ahead in life already, like you were so successful, and you gave it away, and you, you threw all your accomplishments away to work for some random NGO that nobody's ever heard of. But it's my experience. And this is, for me, something that I can look back on with joy and love and life and laughter. The fourth truth I learned is that adventures are the best way to learn. 
So I told you guys earlier, right, that I graduated magna cum laude, but I was supposed to graduate summa cum laude. Um, but on, hey, I'm a really studious kind of person. I've never cut class my entire life. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why. I just, I didn't like cutting class. I was like, I want to learn, you know? <laughs> Such a dork, but I, I really just wanted to be at every class. But in my fourth year, I maxed out all my cuts. I went to Russia for three weeks. I missed all my midterms. And so I lost my summa standing. And it was a very difficult decision for me to make. I was thinking, am I going to regret it? I've been working for this for so long, three years, three years of sleepless nights trying to achieve something, and I'm just going to give it up like that? And I was like, no, maybe I'm smart enough. Maybe I can make up for it when I come back. But I couldn't. Apparently, I'm not that smart. Um, but I did it anyway, because I realized that, again, those were the moments that really mattered. I wouldn't trade going to Russia and being with 1,000 young leaders all across the world for 8.01 increase in my grade. It's not something that I will even remember. Honestly, I don't even remember my GWA anymore. I remember stories from my friends. I remember people I've met, experiences I had. And more than that, more than just learning about, more than just experience being a better teacher, I love that I could learn about the world in such a real and tangible way. When revolutions started erupting across the world, if you guys noticed last year, there were about three or four revolutions happening. Um, there's one in Venezuela right now. Um, Brazil already calmed down. Egypt as well a little bit. But I found out, oh, there was one in Hong Kong as well this year, right? Oh, last year, yes? So I realized that um, I could actually find out on the spot right when it was happening, what was happening in each of these countries. And in a world where media is so strong and where media actually contorts reality and doesn't give you the full picture, I could actually learn from the people themselves who were in these countries. Learn about capitals by going to the city itself or learn about the news by talking to people in those countries and how it was affecting them more than just the logistics of what was happening. And the fifth and last thing that I learned is that, this is an Asian proverb, it says, it is better to see something once than to hear about it a thousand times. And I found this to be so true. Time and time again, I'd always wanted to go to this place or that place. And finally, one day I decided to really do it, to just get up, get on a flight, get on a bus, even if I didn't have money, or even if I didn't know where I was going, even if I didn't speak the language, and I just did it. And it was such an amazing experience. Do you guys recognize where this is? It's one of the seven natural wonders of the world. This was in Machu Picchu. I did a four-day trek to Machu Picchu. It was called the Jungle Trek. I didn't know anyone. I didn't have any money. My friend had to lend me money just to go in the trip, and of course, I paid him back. But um, I got sick in the middle of the trip, actually, and I thought to myself, am I going to do the trek to the top of the mountain, to the top of this ruin? It was like 2,500 meters. So I was like, you know, I, I was already vomiting. There was a Serbian girl with me, and she gave me some black pill to help me digest better and I was so terrified I was like what is this black pill and she was like I'll take one with you don't worry I was like okay all right so I took it and I don't know if it worked but I still have some if you want some later um, so I, I got to see a lot of amazing places that not a lot of people have been able to see or people only dream about seeing I was in the Amazon River at the end of my trip um, my mom had a heart attack of course because I went swimming with piranhas um, if, if you don't have any open wounds, it's fine. You can swim with them. Maybe they'll nibble a little bit, but it's all right. You can swim as well with pink dolphins. I saw a lot of animals, um, and it was an amazing experience. And this is just a snippet of what I've seen, who I've talked to, what I've experienced. So maybe just to wrap this all up, there was something I heard once, uh, a story about some famous orators, orators, in orators. <laughs> in ancient Rome, and they said that one of these speakers stood up and everybody felt so inspired and they clapped and said, wow, you're so amazing. But there was a second speaker, and when he spoke, everybody stood up and said, okay, let's go and do it. So if there's anything that I want you guys to take away from this, from my personal experiences, I don't want you to sit there and feel these happy, fuzzy feelings about, wow, I want to travel, I want to like, build something great with my life, I want to achieve something. I don't want you to feel that way. For me, that is an unsuccessful talk. What I want to happen after this is I want you guys to take whatever insights I've gotten from here, find what is relevant to you, and actually do something about it. 
If there's anything I realize, it's that young people really have the power to shape their lives. They have the power to make what they want, if anything. I've seen it in the countless, count, not countless, but three revolutions that I've seen across the world. I've seen it in the huge number of people that I've talked to, the youth leaders from all around the world. And I believe that we can do it, that young people can. A lot of people say that, oh, I'll achieve it when I'm older. But as young people, we actually have that capacity to do that right here and right now. And I know a lot of you are thinking, yeah, sige, you can travel because maybe you have the funds for it or you know the people for it. But it's not really about that. Um, I've met a lot of people who didn't have the capacity to do it, but still found a way. I met a girl once who wanted to go to Bangladesh for an internship. So she went around all the senators' offices. She had a solicitation letter. And she asked for money from each of the senators. Someone gave her 1,000, 5,000, 3,000. And by the end of her solicitation visit, she had enough money to do her trip. So there are so many ways and means to accomplish what you want. And as young people, I believe we have the power to do this. So just to end with, um, I hope that at the end of this, you will be incited into action to be excited about travel, about shaping your life the way you want, and not the way your parents want it to be, or the way your friends think it should be, but how you really want to live your life at the end of the day. And that's it. Thank you.